Now, I forget what I sound like. I, I go, I play places in LA and all the Latino people. The first time I ever played the Laugh Factory there, uh, you know, it's Latino night and it's, which is, by the way, that was the, just the, the, the pulse of Latin comedy for a long time was the, the, the Laugh Factory on Monday night. Um, but the first time I perform, it's packed and I'm thinking it's going to be great. And I'm doing my thing and they're having fun. And I literally hear, because she's not but seven feet from me, this girl leans to her boyfriend. And she goes, this guy, he kind of talk kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I talk funny. And I forget yeah. what I sound like <laughs> until I get in a taxi in San Antonio. And the guy's like, hey, man, how you doing? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> fuck, that's what I sound like. <laughs> that dude's a brown dude and sounds like that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, that's hilarious. Well, you that was part of your comedy, right? The, it really um, is. I mean, I, I got to yeah. be me. And I got to tell you, I appreciate the Texas flag sitting behind you. It really makes me feel welcome. I just Absolutely. feel at home. Nice, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I love uh, I don't want it to be too in the face, but mm -mm. <laughs> it's it's it, right. It's but it supports me. It used to be used my to... only decoration. And then people were like, dude, you got to like add some other shit. This is you got to add you know. a bottle of tequila. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's look, it's going to go right there for the rest yeah. of the time. It'll be no, part of the right now sitting there. I see the bottle. Well, I see the flag. Well, that's true, too. When I first started doing stand up, one of the first things that I uh, when I made a little bit of money, not much, but when I just made a little bit uh, and I was starting to travel. Uh, I came out of uh, uh, Arlington comedy wise. Uh, Fort Worth is where I grew up. But I I, um, I bought myself a Texas nugget ring, little pinky ring, and I put a diamond yeah. right in Dallas, Fort Worth. <laughs> and and my, I used to have an old joke. People come up to go, hey, man, where are you from? And I'd be like, Poof. read your forehead, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, just a state. We're such <laughs> assholes, you know. Are we really, right? But I it's mean, okay. We kind of deserve to be. Uh, this is a great place, man. It Texans is a great are place. Texans. I always tell people, well, like let's say when I lived in Europe, for instance, I would say, oh, I'm not Amer. I'm look, I am American, but I'm a Texan first, straight yeah. up. You know, yeah. that's just the way I, you know, the way I see it. Um, it's definitely yeah. a state of the heart. I, I love it. I love being there. I live in the state of Kentucky now, and people go, "Man, don't you miss Texas?" I say, "You know, I, I do. Texas is in my heart." Uh, but the land here in Kentucky is just so beautiful. I compare it. I go, Texas is like my first girlfriend, uh, flat and brown. You know, it's <laughs> just, I can't, I can't say no to the land here. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> you know? Oh shit. Oh my God. Still well, yeah, what, that, that's still, yeah. Fond memories, but uh, I've moved on. Uh, you know, what, what is, I've, I've driven through Kentucky. I've never stayed there. Is it, it's not mountain. Is it mountainous? Is it? No. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, so I mean, there's not mountains. There's not mountains, yeah. but you have beautiful hills and, uh, it's, it's just uh, the rivers and the trees and the, uh, I live in Louisville. Um, and I'm, I'm 20 minutes from downtown, but you can drive in any direction. And within 11 minutes, you're seeing horse country and it's just pretty. You know, it's okay, just right on. Yeah, that's awesome. No, that's awesome. Well, that, that doesn't seem too far out from, you know, Texas, right? I mean, that's the yeah. funny thing about Dallas Fort yeah. Worth. You, you can be not very, I mean, well, maybe not now the way it's grown so much the city, but when I was growing up in Tarrant County, um, you could be in, you know, the country and no, I mean, no time at all. You were, right now you know, in 25 you know minutes, you could be two exits away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> My mom still lives in Hearst and, and I go there quite often and, and good. Boy, that Lord. is changed. Hearst is oh. not even the same. I don't even recognize it. No. I don't no. even recognize that place. That is that whole the only thing I, I recognize. To, yeah. As I say, the only thing I recognize that has not changed is when you're on 183 and you're headed uh, westbound, right? Yeah, westbound. Uh, towards the mall if you exit yeah. precinct line there at the uh at the there at the corner there's still this big motherfucking pothole that they can't seem to <laughs> fix it's been there since i was 14 i'm like holy shit guys how many times have you, you built the new city hall you've you've done it but it's still the same fucking pothole and every yeah, year hilarious. there's a bunch of dudes who go out there and fix it and then it's still fucking there I don't know what it is. Oh my god! All that I want is, so, is an in and out so real. that exit. Yeah, <laughs> that is so real. I can't even tell you. Yeah, that is so funny. Oh my god, that's cracking me up. I, I'm. Oh man, that's too funny. Yeah, I don't. I actually don't. Uh, I love Austin. I'm in Austin now, and I love uh, oh, Austin's great. Yeah, I love this city, man. Yeah, it's so different from where I grew up there, and 
you know, DFW, uh, but I love Austin a lot, man. I just love the river. I wish we would have yeah, had yeah, something like say, that. You got the, yeah, you got the river. You can float the Brazos. You can float the Guadalupe. You can, uh, uh, what is so it, uh, Barton Springs in that? Yeah, it's called? Barton, Barton Springs. Springs. Yep. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. man, it's, uh, it's, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree, man. Yeah, it's, it really is cool here. Um, look, let's. Oh my God, no, this tequila is going to take me off the rails here, dude. I can already tell I'm I'm losing let's track. Let's do a toast. Of, uh, yeah, let's do. <laughs> He's like, hey, why don't let's you do tell, another toast? Why don't you tell your listeners and your viewers what my one um, stipulation, oh, I guess good. you would say, my my uh, for you to do the podcast. Yeah, you were like, uh, okay, you got to go buy some tequila. We're going to drink. I said, you got to drink with me. You yeah. Gotta you got to drink with me. with me. Let's have a drink. I loved it, man. Nobody's ever asked me uh, to, to have a drink with them on the podcast. So there you go. Oh, man, I'm there all I'm I'm all about this. Uh, in fact, I got to pour a little bit more. But OK, let me ask you about this. Um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about Latin Kings of comedy, because yeah. I, I don't know if you know, I think of comedy now and there really isn't this big movement of Latin comedy happening anymore at least not that i see or am i blind to this am i you know i i i think there is i'm, I'm so busy doing my thing i i don't i don't know um uh, there's definitely a movement that i mean the latino people are all across the nation and here's what's beautiful about latino comedy is uh you don't have to be latino to 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 love it i yeah. mean i challenge i challenge any family in in this nation uh, uh not latino or latino if you're not Latino, I challenge you in this day and age to not have a Latino somewhere in your family. And if you are Latino, <laughs> I challenge you to not have, uh, you know, uh, a black, a white, uh, an Asian or somebody in your family because yeah. it's and so we can all kind of relate. I do remember when I was doing stand up and I, you know, I kind of start I started in Arlington in Dallas, Fort Worth and, and uh, in San Antonio and and, and Houston, Austin. And, and then I went to Oklahoma City and Missouri and I kind of went to Missouri and headed right. And, you know, Ohio. And that's, that's where I kind of got my chops as a young comic. So when I went to LA, I, I really thought, cause I was doing well, I was moving up in the ranks and people were knowing my name. And there used to be a, a, a little paper that went out called just for laughs. It was a, it was a, just a, a, like the Dallas observer type magazine or, oh, or okay, paper, yeah. but it was, yeah. it was nationwide. And you could look on there, you could see all the comedy club listings and you could always see who was working. And I was really proud at that time because my name was always in there, was really awesome. always in there. And that's why people didn't even know you that comics would go, oh, I, I've seen your name, man. You're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when I went to L.A., uh, I was I was doing well. And and I really thought to myself, man, I'm going to get there. I'm going to blow this shit up is what I thought, you know, and, <laughs> and because I, I, all the clubs I was working, I didn't really see any Latino comics. Yeah. Um, and I thought, man, I'm gonna get there and tear this shit up. And someone said, you need to go to uh, the laugh factory on Monday night. That's Latino night. And I was like, well, hell yeah. Go in there two shows on a Monday night sold out for decades. Uh, and I get there and they put me on the show. And when I get there, they were like, you can go on, uh, you're going to go on last. And I said, okay, not because they wanted me to close the show. They just said, you're last. I said, okay, <laughs> yeah. no problem. Um, and, and I sat there and I watched 14 to 15 Latin comics and I was blown away. And this was in 1992, I think, or something. And I'll tell you something, Patrick, I sat there and watched 14 and 15 guys and girls and I remember thinking in the back of the room, well, this is going to take a little longer than I thought <laughs> because I watched, I watched Pablo Francisco. I watched Gabriel Iglesias, oh, wow. uh, 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 Gilbert Esquivel, Rudy Moreno, uh, 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 God dang it. Uh, uh, Willie Barcena, Jeff Garcia, uh, 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 you know, uh, Freddie Soto, may he rest in peace, uh, Paul Rodriguez. And then Paul was the only one I, I had heard of. And I'm yeah. sitting there watching all of these cats come from different angles and i was like oh man and they all looked similar to me you know they were they resembled me and and uh and 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 i thought what am i gonna do i was a little nervous but what i had was this whole other angle this kind of like i said the girl was like this guy talks money i had this southern <laughs> angle that they were like who the fuck is this guy yeah and 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 that's where um i, I don't know if that energy of course that energy still exists in latino comedy but i think now um you know, I think Gabriel Fluffy really showed the world, yeah. hey, you don't have to be you don't have to be Latino to come to my shows. Yeah. And, and that's what I've yeah. always been kind of preaching. Um, 
but uh, but he really he really made it mainstream you know and and That's so awesome. hats off yeah hats off to gabriel for doing that because he just made it about being funny and and introduced yeah, the world hilarious. to oh yeah hilarious. and he introduced the world to uh, to felipe esparza and he introduced the world to uh, uh to uh, rick gutierrez you know who's out of uh, texas and and, nice. and some great comics and um but uh but that's where Paul saw me on on those Latino nights. Probably the fourth time I was there, he came up to me. He goes, "Hey, you know, you're kind of different. Because I like you. Uh, you kind of kind of this uh, hillbilly angle, you know. You're doing this thing, and 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 uh, uh, <laughs> and I was like, all right. And he asked me he asked me to open a show for him in Toledo, Ohio, and and he paid me. I think he paid my airfare, hotel and paid me 850 bucks to open a show. And I was like, are you kidding me? I did 15, 20 minutes. And, and oh, before man. I knew it, I was, I was opening shows for him on the regular. And then Joey Medina was, and then, and then, and then the Kings of comedy, Cedric and, and, uh, and uh, Bernie and yeah. Steve and DL uh, had a great hit with that. And Paul was like, uh, you know, we're going to do a Latin Kings. And, 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 you know, and, and that I wasn't a Latin King. Uh, it was Cheech, Paul, and George. They were the staples, and and uh, they just invited a bunch of comics to come out to El Paso. And I think there were nine or ten different young comics that performed. And Paul told us straight up, "Everybody going to get a shot." Uh, he goes, uh, "But only only two of you are going to make the cut." And and um, and and I don't know if if oh, if sure. my set was one of the ones that were better, but but you know just whatever whatever happened. I mean, because everybody was great. And it was a lot of energy, but Joey and I were lucky enough to, to be the ones that they chose to, uh, to, uh, you know, That's to make awesome. the film and, oh and, and, you know, and so thank you, Paul Rodriguez. Thank you, Scott Montoya, producer of, of uh, and director of, of the Latin Kings of comedy. 